How's it going, everyone? My name is Miguel Fuentes, and today is Wednesday. And I forgot to put in the line. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so today we're going to get into the series on um, <clears throat> endocrinology or the study of insects. And so I hope you guys enjoy this little mini series of lectures that I will be presenting. And I'm trying to experiment using a uh, screen capture recording so that I can, you know, make videos about it. And so I hope, I hope you enjoy this, uh, this presentation. And uh, before we get started, let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly, <clears throat> Heavenly Father, Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for today, Lord. Even though, you know, Sundays are tough, but, Lord, you give us strength, Lord, to overcome sin, to overcome uh, whatever what, what, whatever situation that we are in, Lord. We, we ask that you will break every chain in Jesus' name. And, Lord, we ask right now, Lord, that you will come and change our lives, change our hearts, change our minds, and, and mold us into your image, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. All right, I hope that you are enjoying so far. Let's go ahead with, with this teaching. Amen. So, we understand that in, endocrinology is the study of well, it's the, it's the branch of zoology, which is the study of animals, that deals with insects. And now, in this lecture, we're going to be dealing with um, uh, centipedes and millipedes and also uh, um, arachnids as well. Uh, so insects are a part of the uh, following of uh, anthropods. So this includes... Uh, insects, centipedes, millipedes, crustaceans, and um, <clears throat> and uh, you know spider, ticks, and uh, um, how do you say uh, arachnids? Okay, so insects has between five to ten million species, which that's almost everywhere. In the world and insects uh, belongs to a group of anthropods called hexapods and uh, you know it's very 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 interesting that that we we understand through, through, through science that God did create these insects and spiders and ticks and I'll, and I will show you later uh, with scripture uh, about insects and spiders and all these things all right so let's get into the classification of insects now there's a whole lot of families and whole lot of class and whole lot of species so it's going to rapid fire through these uh, classifications and we'll go in depth next week. So, this is the non insect uh, hexapods, which includes the uh, the class of springtails, which has uh, 32 families and has uh, 8,100 species. Got the class of Protoritis. Uh, seven families and uh, has a 760 species. Uh, the class of diperfians <clears throat> has uh, eight families and has 9,075 uh, species. Next, we have the uh, the order of uh, bustle tails. Which has two families and has at least uh, 470 species. And uh, now, if it, now 
In this course, or this lecture rather, I'm not going to go into all the species of it. I'm just going over some, not a whole, whole lot. So just a little side note there. Next, we have the order of silverfish. Uh, has six families and has 570 species. Next is the order of mayflies, which has 25 families and, and has 3,000 species. Uh, the order of uh, Dumbflies and dragonflies has uh, 32 families and has 5,600 species. The next order is the order of crickets and grasshoppers, which has 40 uh, families and 25,000 species. Next, we have the order of stoneflies which has 19 families and has 3,000 species. Next, we got the order of rock crawlers, uh, has only one family and has 30 species. The next we have is uh, earwigs, which has 11, 11 uh, families and has 190 species. The next we have the order of sticks and leaf insects, which has three families and has 2,500 species. Next we have the order of mantis, which has two families and it has 2,300 species. Next <clears throat> we have the uh, the cockroaches has uh, nine families, and there are 4,600 uh, species. The other one is the uh, the order of termites, um, which has seven families, and it has 2,900 species. Next, we have the order of web, uh, web spinners, which has 11 families and has four, 400 species. Next, we have the order of parasitic lice, which is like uh, there, there's human lice, basically, is part of that family. So, which has 24 families and has 5,200 species. Next, we have the order of angel angel uh, insects, which has one family and has 43 species. Next, we have the order of bark lice and book lice, which has 41 families and it has 5,600 species. Next, we have the order of bugs which has 134 families and has 88,000 species. The order of Taurips has 14 families and has 7,400 species. Next we have the order of Doshun flies and Algar flies, which has uh, Two families has uh, 300 species. Next, we have the order of snake flies, which has two families and 2,000 species. Next is the order of ant uh, ant lion, uh, long wings, and others. Um, order, sorry. Sure, sure, for or, uh, others, and uh, it has 14 families and it has 11,000 species, uh, species. Next, we got the order of beetles, which has 166 families and it has 3,700, yeah, three, sorry, 30. 
Hold on. Give me one second. 370,000 species. Next, we have the order of Stamprodictus, if I pronounce that right. Uh, has 11 families and has 580 species. Next, we have the, the order of flies, which has 130 families, which has uh, two, uh, 2,400 species. Next, we have the order of Carnenus flies, which has 43 families and has 10,000 species. Next, we have the order of moths and butterflies, which has 100, uh, 127 families, which has 165,000 species. And lastly, for not least, the order of bees, wasps, ants, and sawflies has 91 families, and it has 189, sorry, 198,000 species. So the next group is the class of centipedes and millipedes. Uh, the class of centipede has 24 families and it has 3,149 species. Next, we have the class of millipedes, which has 147 families, which it has 9,973 uh, 9, species. Let's move on to the um, <clears throat> to the um, how do you say um, um, um arachnids there we go arachnids. So we have the order of of scorpions. Which has 15 families and 1,500 species. Next, we have the order of uh, Pestitoscopians, which has 25 families and it has 3,300 3, species. Next, we have the order of Sun Spiders, which has 12 families and it has 1,100 species. Next is the order of whip scorpions, which has one family and it has 100, 106 species. Next, we got the whip, whip spider, which has five families and it has 160 species. Now, the next group is the order of harvest men. Now, don't get confused with the harvest men with the harvest men spider. Um, it's very, very different. So just, just be cautious of that. And so the Horace Men has 48 families and it has 6,000, well, sorry, 6,125 uh, species. And then we got the order of ticks and mites has 438 families, which has 48 thousand two hundred species then next we have the order of spiders which has 100 110 families which has uh, 42,000 species so that's all the classifications of each insects um, so the last thing I want to do before we go, what does the Bible say about insects? Now, for me, I am a creation, a a a uh, a creationist that I believe that God created everything according to the Word of God, and so I believe personally that the Word of God is 
God's constitution. This is God's inspired word. And so let me go ahead and read to you some scriptures. And yeah. So first off, let's go ahead and read Exodus chapter 8. Now some of these verses are more of a uh, figures of speech. Read, well, I mean, you know, except insects exist those days, so not only it is um, part of a fi uh, figure of speech, but God uses it as a example most often. So Exodus chapter 8, verse, verse 24, and it reads, The Lord did so. And a great swarm of flies came into the house of, of Pharaoh and into his servant's house and into all the land of Egypt. The land was corrupted because of the swarm of flies. See, God can send out flies. And, and we see for a fact that, that we see famines in the land is that the grasshoppers, the locusts, um, destroy the crop, and because of that, they, they, they are uh, famined, basically. And we see this again in, uh, in Leviticus. Things, things will get a little dicey. In Leviticus chapter 11, verse, verses 23, through 23 and it reads all flying insects that walk moving on all fours shall be detestable to you yet these you may eat of every flying insect that creeps on all fours those that have joint legs above their feet with which to hop on the ground. Hmm. Even of these you may eat the locusts of any kind, the bold locusts of any kind, the cricket of any kind, and the, and the grasshopper of any kind. But all other flying insects that have four feet shall be distasteful to you. And by these you sh shall be unclean. Whoever touches the carcass of these shall be unclean until the evening. Wow. See, God set a standard. Yes, it's okay that you eat cricket, locusts, and grasshoppers. But you can't eat other insects except these that God has listed. Now, I never tried fried crickets or fried grasshoppers. It's not my style. But yet, back then, God made this law. God made a, a, a decree to the people of Israel that this, that eating crickets, eating grasshoppers, eating Locuses is good for you. So let's go ahead and read uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 19. And it reads Every creeping thing that flies is unclean to you they must not be eaten okay god made another standard 
So let's go ahead and read Judges. Judges chapter 14. Verse 8. After a while, when he returned to take her, this is Samson, Samson's wedding, he turned aside to see the carcasses of the lion, and a swarm of bees and honey were in the carcass of the lion. He swooped it out into the hands and ate it as he went along. Wow. So bees were bees were present during this time. Let's go ahead and read Proverbs chapter 30. Proverbs chapter 30. So these are examples of insects that were present in the Old Testament. Or oh, some or oh, some insects in the uh, in the Bible rather. Proverbs chapter 30 uh, verse 25 reads the ants are a people not strong, yet they prepare their food in the summer, which is true. And then in verse 27, it reads, The locusts have no king, yet they go forth all of them by bands. The spider takes hold with their hand and it it and is in king's palace. Thank you, Lord, for that word. So these are the verses that that describes or not only Describe, but these are real insects during during the time. Sorry, during biblical times, and you know we can look at um, you know, different type, you know, the different scriptures, but but we see how how God uses insects. See, so we we see God use insects at judgment. We see, we see uh, insects used by food. Remember, there's insects all over the place, from ants to bees to wasps, termites, um, what else? Butterflies, moths, you know, all these things did exist. Even during the time of God's creation, when they coexist with dinosaurs, with prehistoric mammals, or prehistoric fish, prehistoric amphibians, prehistoric um, birds, during the time when God created the heaven and the earth. And God created insects, and yet before Adam sinned against God, he had dominion over all the insects of this world. Which means he, he you know, he is free handling wasps without them stinging them or 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 he you know the bees swarming in their in an Adam's hand but yet never get stung imagine Adam free handle a venomous spider 
such as the Black Widow. And that Black, Black Widow didn't buy him at all. Why? Because he had dominion over all the insects. But once we lost that right, insects fly away. Bees and wasps get hostile towards us for invading their nests. And that we get stung multiple times. And yet, sometimes we have an allergic reaction to bee stings or wasp stings. And it goes bad very, very quickly. Or perhaps a black widow uh, bite us or bit us. And, and we get envenomated. And that we got to go to the hospital to get anti-venom. Now, there's certain spiders that I, love, that I love to handle. Like tarantulas. They're pretty cool. They're pretty hairy. So, I'm, I'm very, very blessed to study these things. And so, next week, we're going to get into... Um, I want to see here. We're going to be doing non-insect, uh, non-insect heptapods and probably stop all the way to stoneflies. And we're going to be taking a look at these families and, and some of the species of that family. And, um, yeah. So... And also may probably do some probably do some anatomy of insects as well. I should add that in there. So that we can take a look at the you know, parts of the body and understanding what they do and how they do, you know. And then we get into the uh, the more specific classification part of it. All the fun stuff and I'll you know and I'll make a, a, a slideshow that has pictures uh, and, 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 you know, just to make it look fun, you know. Praise God. So I hope that you enjoy this presentation as I do. Um, it is a blessing. It is a great blessing. So I hope you guys uh, have a great, great, great evening. And may God bless you. May God keep you. I'll see you guys again next time.